Hello, ladies. How are you? It is 10 a.m. on Friday, last day of training this week. Today's Friday. We are chatting about networking and finding a mentor. I know a lot of people talk about finding mentors, expanding their community and their own social circle. So can't wait to dive in. I'm going to give you some Vanessa tips on how to find a mentor and how to expand your network. Next week, we're going to be talking about specifically during quarantine and isolation, but there were some key elements that I wanted to talk about today, and I might even get to some quarantine tips right now, um, but I have some key elements that I want to talk about before we dive into some of those tips, but I'll probably still sneak them in because I love giving you ladies information. Let me know if you are here. Give me a heart and a comment so I know that the comment box is working. Hey, ladies. Let me see. Comment. Okay, so if you ladies can give me a, a like and a comment so that I know you're here. Okay, Brittany gave me a like. Thank you. Brittany, can you comment so that I know the comment box is working? Because Facebook has been a little glitchy lately. And if, oh, yeah. Hello. Oh, thanks, Katie. Thanks for joining from Hamilton, Ontario. I love that we have people, honestly, from all over the world in this group now. We have people from Australia, um, Asia, US. All of us in quarantine. How fun is that? Okay, awesome. We are good. So I'm just going to wait. Oh, just a bit behind. Yeah, I don't, it could just be the Wi Fi. Everyone's trying to get online, but I hope it's okay. Is it still okay, Brittany? Okay, ladies, welcome. Good morning. How was your day? Did you do your morning routines this morning? Because I know at the end of the week, even for me, it gets a little harder to do your morning routine because you just want to do nothing. I get it. That's how I felt this morning. But I still made sure I did some essential oils, some gratitudes, and some stretching. I took a few breaths outside, did some breath work, tea. Got my dreamer cup again today. Okay, I'm going to start training. If you ladies have any questions about networking specifically, put them in the comment box. We'll get to those. And so we're going to chat about networking. Let me know in the chat if you feel like you want to expand your network and or find different people in your network. One of the biggest reasons actually, and I'll go back to when I started the ladies community. When I started the ladies community, it was simply because most of my friends were married and had children. I was a single woman in my thirties living downtown and I wanted to meet more people and entrepreneurs that I could connect with. And so that my social life wasn't dictated by my friends who couldn't do anything anymore. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of you women can relate about just being in different stages of your current circle and then needing to really expand outwards. I also needed another expansion and change in my social circle when I started to take entrepreneurship very seriously and wanted to expand. So I needed to surround myself for me with really strong entrepreneurs that had already been successful and that we could learn from one another because I really value being able to learn from one another professionally and personally within my social circles. So with that story, I'm actually giving you two questions. Number one is what do you value and what is important in your social circle? I just told you for me what that was. I wanted to grow professionally and personally with my network. What's important to you? Fun, drinking, um, dancing, you know, professional, personal. There's no right answer here. It's just knowing what stage of life are you and what is important to you right now. And or it could have been all of the above. But knowing that there are certain people that will be able to fulfill different parts of your social circle, depending on what you value and what's important. I also 
which you can probably tell from these lives is I really value deep, meaningful conversations. And I love being able to call my friends out and tell them, you know, maybe we can look at this differently and how can we evolve? How can we grow? How can we change and or use this opportunity to continue to evolve our business or ourselves? That type of thinking and that type of questioning, annoying to some people. <laughs> Couldn't imagine why, <laughs> just kidding, but it is. So knowing what you like and value so that you now know what you're looking for, okay? So that's the first thing. What do you know, what do you want and value in your community? And then I had a second thing, which I can't remember right now because it came up within the conversation, but I'll, I'm sure I'll get to it. So the second exercise I want you to do, so number one is what do you value? Number two, I want you to write a list of what you're looking for in your community. You're looking for conversation, fun, adventure, whatever it is. I want you to write a list of all the things that you want in friends and mentors. Okay. So I want you to think about, oh, I'm just throwing out the exercises. You're a third one already. I need you to write out who you want to meet and who do you want to expand? Mentors, friends, boyfriend. Um, there's so many options, right? Well, are there really? I only named three and I was struggling for the fourth, but I need you to write out who do you want to meet? Okay, so we're giving you three exercises right off the bat here. What do you value? What are the specific qualities that you're looking for? And who do you wanna meet and network with? Now, the reason why the qualities is really important is I'm gonna put it right back in our face right now. I want you to sit down and look at the qualities after you write them. And I want you to think to yourself, am I these things? Am I being real with myself? Like if I'm, if one of my values for friends is I want a really positive community. I want a really positive and uplifting group of people to surround myself with. I want you to be really real because are you being that person? It is very hard to attract things that you are not. So your fourth step to this exercise is looking at Am I those things that I want to attract and I want to be around? Am I being who I want to be around? And if the answer is no, we just have some self-development and some real work to do there. And that's cool because we're always growing and evolving. Okay. Now I'm going to take these different sections and separate them out a little bit. So let's chat mentors right now. Mentors, you need to be very specific about who and what qualities you are looking for in a mentor. Reason being is you need to know who that person is so you can ask people. When you know who that person is, you're a lot more, you know, you have your eye on the prize. You can ask people that you know, hey, I'm looking for a woman, a man who's about this age, who's done this with their business, who works in this industry, who has this position at a company. The more you ask, the more you are likely to find someone, okay? Other ways that you can find a mentor once you know what the list of qualities is, you can ask people, you can look on Instagram, you can look on LinkedIn. I found a lot of my, so my mentors, one I found on Facebook, one I found on kind of LinkedIn, but more word of mouth. So I met someone else on LinkedIn who introduced me to somebody else. One was a referral because I asked and they knew what I was doing and want and introduced me to this person. Another was from Instagram. Two were from Instagram, actually. So I have a lot of mentors and advisors that help and guide me. So now you might be thinking, okay, how the heck, if you find someone on LinkedIn and or 
Instagram, how do you turn them into a mentor? Am I right? Any questions there? <laughs> so it takes a little bit of time. It's kind of like dating. You want to also get to know them. So following them for a little bit, commenting on their stuff, sending them DMs, seeing if they respond, see what kind of rapport and energy you have together. Then once you get to a point where you're feeling comfortable, you really admire them. You know, I, I tell them, Hey, I'm loving what you're doing. I really appreciate everything you're putting out there. I look forward to finding your information all the time. It's really helping me. You want to be giving them compliments as well as telling them how important they are to you in your journey. Then I get to the point where I flat out ask them, Hey, you know, I really love what you're doing. Can I consider you a advisor or mentor of mine? And almost always they'll say yes. Maybe not, may, but it's worth the ask. You got to ask for what you want. The next step when they've said yes, don't leave it at that. There's one more step that you have to carry it through in order to actually get something from the relationship. And so you say that's so awesome, I'm so excited, whatever, to show your gratitude. And then say, you know, I really want to be clear, what does being a mentor mean to you? What is the best way that we can set up this relationship so that it is beneficial to both you and I? Do you want me to ask you questions when I have them? Do you want to set up a monthly call, a weekly call? get very clear on what's a comfortable relationship for them so that you are setting those boundaries and those may change over time but you just want to be very clear on what that means to you and them and also asking them this could have been even before you asked them to be an advisor but especially when you've asked them to be an advisor or mentor you want to always be giving value so being very clear when you meet people that you like how can I help you? Okay. So I feel like there's so much info. I hope I'm not going all over the place today, but I want to give a little bit of information here is that don't be the person that's always asking for things. Be the person who's offering to help people who is offering their services, who's offering how they can also help you. Or when you do ask that you say, Hey, you know, I'd love if you could help me with this. What can I do to help you? This simple question is amazing. It shows your intention. It just opens up your heart and really builds connection with your actual community and network. So you'll notice that all of my trainings kind of link together in the sense that I truly believe that we need to like on business day, we need to be giving and provide value. So when you open your heart and you ask for something, but offer something, it's just such a beautiful relationship. Those that just ask, 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 it has a very different energy that that person doesn't necessarily want to do it for you. We've all been on the other side. So just remember when you're building a community, your community, whether it be two people, four people, 10 people, 10,000 people, how can you give value? And when you're asking for something, ask them, how can I help you? How can, what do you need right now? Is there anything I can help you with at this moment? If not, I'll check back with you or please let me know when there is, because I'm here for you and I, I want to return the favor. Okay. All right. So mentors, do you ladies have any questions about mentors before we go into, you know, friends and other networking? We'll see what's coming in here. Good morning. Oh, we did have one question about paying, right? I saw that, but now I can't see it anymore. So I don't know if it was taken off. So that's a great question. There's a difference between advisors, mentors, coaches. Coaches, you're usually paying mentors and advisors, depending on the arrangement, it's not always paid. So, and a lot of the time it's not, 
So that's something to communicate with them and ask them, you know, would you like me to compensate you for this? And, or you would be amazed how often people will give free information and just want to help. If you find someone who's just ahead of you in your industry or whatever it is that you're doing, they know the struggle that you're going through. They want to help you. They want to teach. They want you to learn. And if you're going to be there and be a good mentee, then they will continue to help you. What is a good mentee, you might ask, <laughs> is doing the work. You know how many people have come out even to me to ask questions and, you know, and I'm always willing to help for the most part. <laughs> um, so I'm always willing to help and offer, you know, advice and, and help you to the next step. You know how often I have that initial conversation? They never follow up. They never do what I actually told them to do. You, they never take that next step and take initiative to continue that interaction. And I know there might be some fear in there like, oh, I don't want to bother her. I don't want to take her time. We want to know what you did. We want to know about your success. We want to know if it helped you, what we told you. So update them, tell them, do what they said to do. They want to know it works and they want to know they helped you. We are people. We love to help. We love to give to others like part of our purpose and our mission is to really help others get to the next level and to pass on our information have you ladies heard about the hero's journey the hero's journey is a you can look it up so that i don't uh go into a, another story here that can be a whole other training but it's really just the journey of your life and the information that you gather. And the very short Cole's notes is that we start out somewhere, we go through some sort of awakening and learning process, and then we share. People like to share what they know and what they've been through and what they've learned. So take advantage of that in a, you know, the nicest way possible. Use that to, to learn and to grow so that you can also pass that on to somebody else. Um, yeah, exactly. Janet says it makes it easier to break the ice and, um, and make an exchange if you're willing to offer something. And you may be saying, you know, what do I have to offer someone who's run a multi-million dollar business? Well, ask them, what can I do for you? You know, what, um, do you have anything you want me to look over? Maybe they have some work that they need done, or you really just don't know until you ask. And the ask, is so much more meaningful than not asking. One more thing then about mentors before we move on to a quick little snippet, and this actually goes to everything. I love networking. I think every day I say I love this topic and I could talk about it forever, but you wanna know where do these people hang out? You wanna get in the room online or in person with the people that you need to meet. So if you're not getting in the room with the people that you need to meet, you got to figure out a way to get there. Volunteer at events, reach out to people and ask if you can get, offer them something, if you can give them something, if you can provide them value. You have to get in the room to play. So stop standing outside. And if you're feeling, oh, I can't do that, I you know, I don't belong here. If other stuff is coming up like insecurities and fears, that's okay. You just know that you have to work on that because don't cut yourself before other people cut you. You have to get in the room to make those interactions. People are just people and do not deserve to be put on a pedestal. So if you're opening your heart and having a great intention when you are networking, people will feel that. So pay attention to your intention. I find I always give so much information on these things. Hey, from California, Diana. Hello, good morning. And we're talking about networking. So let me know if you have any questions about networking. And so, yes, so find out where people are and just always be using this as a growth. For example, 
I knew that I, when I wanted to meet my mentors, I wanted to meet people that were already building multi-million dollar businesses. I wanted to learn from them. Like, how the heck do you even do that? So I would go work at the Ritz Carlton and nice hotels in every city I was at. So I would go and, and see, and again, so we have a comment coming up about pay attention to your intention. And it's so true. It's not to use other people. It's to learn and grow. And so I want you to think of networking in three elements. Okay. You want to network with people who are ahead of you at the same stage as you and just behind you. And those give you different perspectives and add value. So you look up to the mentors that are just ahead of you and they teach you and you to also teach them. You'd be surprised. The people at your level, you're kind of grinding it out together. You're learning from one another. You can call each other. Hey, have you figured out this sales funnel? Have you figured this out? Or I just have this issue with this, you know, um, client. How do I deal with it? Then you have the people just behind you that you can teach. So then you become a mentee and a mentor and a colleague almost. Okay. So think about, are there any areas that you're currently weaker in that you can continue to grow and evolve in so that you can, so that you can just continue to add value? Do you see how I keep going to this value? How can you add value? How can you just be a person? How can you just love and looking at how you're showing up? And this goes back, back to the first example and little exercise I gave you is looking at who do you want to meet and are you being that? Because if you want to meet someone who's willing to help you, you have to be willing to help. If you are wanting to meet people who are positive and uplifting and, um, and growth minded, you got to be that also. Yeah, so Diana says there was a huge shift for her um, when working from cafes and co-working spaces versus luxury hotels. It's true, and it depends who you are interacting with. It also, if we link back to manifestation, who do you want to be around? Who do you want to show up as? When you go to a five-star hotel, they treat you like gold. I'm telling you, it's manifestation central. <laughs> they treat you very well. They know your name. They know your order. And surprisingly, it's not that much more expensive. So if you're thinking, oh, oh my goodness, I can't do that. I don't have money. Again, that's a thought process and a self-development point for you to dive a little bit deeper into. But you can stay all day at the Ritz Carlton for a tea, which is like $5. Okay. Hear me out. And a snack, which is an additional, you know, they have a little cafe, $5, $6. So for under, you know, for about $15, $20, including tip, for $20 under, you can stay at the Ritz Carlton all day. Most co working spaces and or coffee shops would be, you know, $25 plus per day. So just something to think about and very noisy. So I love giving you different ideas of, you know, how to network today. We really focus mostly on mentors, that relationship and setting up your intention, setting up your, um, your different categories of who you want to meet and looking at what do you currently have in your life so we can continue to grow. I think I want to end it there and we can pick up uh, next Friday. Cause there's lots to talk about where to find people where, especially now that we're in quarantine, how do you network online? Well, the ladies community is a, is a great way to do so. If you have someone you want to meet, do a post today post. Hey, you know, I want to meet someone who is a designer or who works in finance and, or who is an artist, you know, how are you managing during this time and put it out there. I'm sure you will meet people and, a lot of the women are really great in the group, obviously. So I'm going to leave it there. Let me know. I'm going to wait one more minute to see if you have any other questions. Hey, Tanya or Tanya. I hope I pronounce that right. You never know from writing. 
Does anyone have any other questions about mentors um, and or networking for the day? Before we finish up. Okay, well, if I don't see any other questions, I'm gonna sign off today. I'm gonna send you so much love, happy Friday, and it's okay. Well, how do I say it though? Is it number, option number one is Tanya. Option number two is Tanya. Write a one or a two in the, in the thing so I know how to say it. Okay, so I am sending you ladies so much love. Happy Friday. I know every day kind of sounds and feels a little the same. I'm feeling a little tired today, which you might not be able to notice, but I'm headed into a VIP day with a client today. So I'm going to bring my option. Option number two. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Tanya. And sending you ladies so much love. Thanks for being here, for being so committed to being your best. And I hope these tips help you. If you have any questions and or topics that you want me to cover next week, write it in the comments. Just to recap, Monday, I go over motivation. Tuesday, business. Wednesday, mindset. Thursday, relationships. Friday, networking. If you want to look at any of the recordings from the past trainings we did this week, just go through the discussion board and you can actually look up the tag training with Vanessa and you'll see all the training. So let me know, give me questions. I'm probably going to even post next week the topic for the next day. So if you ladies have questions, you can ask them and we can really start to get specific on specific questions and, and strategies, because this week was a little bit more general, giving you overall concepts, and then we can go a little bit more specific uh, next week. So thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day. Oh, I love these. Taylor, Tanya, Katie, Diana, Allison, Courtney, Janet, Brittany, Revis was here too. Ladies, thank you for joining me. And for all you I cannot see, sending you so much love and strong intentions for the day. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.